let's get the, let's get this out of the way now before we get into anything. On three, three, two, one. Hello, Hello there. there. Action. It's like that game. All right, so I'm Scott. I'm TJ. I'm Ryan. And this is a review. On today's episode, we'll be talking about Obi Wan Kenobi. Ubi Doob, Ubi Doob, Scooby Doob, Kadoobi is a show starring Ewan McGregor as Ben Kenobi. As Ben Kenobi, aka Ubi Dooby, Scooby Dooby, Kenobi. I am Ubi Doob and Ubi. I have the silliest name in the galaxy. Uh, and it's basically a bridge between episode three and episode four. What was Obi-Wan doing in this time? Uh, he has a face off with Darth Vader again, et cetera, et cetera. What did you guys think about Obi-Wan Kenobi? It felt as necessary as the Lion King one and a half. In defense of that movie, and I know this is like unrelated, <laughs> there's a great scene where Timon actually causes all the hyenas to coll he collapses a tunnel, right. all the hyenas fall over. Sorry, going back no, to no. Star Wars. Quit, it's wait, like Timon's wait. La <laughs> moment of glory in the entire franchise. By the way, everyone, Ryan's our gaffer, and he's a huge Star Wars fan, but we figured we'd have him on. <sighs> yeah, I guess we didn't really explain that uh, yet. Um, hello there. Yeah. It's a reference. He's it's been wearing reference. the same shirt for the last six months, and uh, we were nobody on the crew really wanted to ask about it. And then the show came up, and I don't. Yeah, he brought his own mic. I did. Yeah, I don't. I think it looks good with my eyes, the mic, and the lighting, actually, and the shirt. Also, to be honest, I got this shirt today. It's a replacement for the one I've been wearing for the last six months. This is a new really one. Started to wear out. Yeah. Yeah. So. What was the point of the show? Money. Well, yeah, to make money. I'd, I'd have to agree with that. But, like, from a narrative perspective. Um, people always talk about, like, there are comic books and there's other things about, like, what happened to Obi-Wan in those 20 years? Did he just sit and meditate? Did he go and start the Rebel Alliance? Did he do this? Did he do that? And depending on which book you read and which iteration you believe, since some stuff's no longer canon, you don't really know. Like, Here's my question. What if I've done none of that? And I've only watched the movies. Oh, well, then this is for you because you just don't know. You don't. So, regardless. It, it, rega <laughs> it, it, you're a big Star Wars fan is what you're getting I at. would say I am a student of the literature. Okay. So big what? Star Wars fan. Because, you know, like if you were to look at Star Wars as text. Wait, Ryan, you only, we told you we only give you one rant. Is it's this... not a rant. No, it'll take, th it'll take less than three minutes. It'll take 30 seconds. All right, detour. If you look at Star Wars' as text and you're someone who loves it, you're someone who like... In so she, so spoiler alert, Obi-Wan Kenobi <laughs> stars Ewan McGregor and they brought back Hayden Christensen as well. Have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? They, they did bring, well, well Jimmy, Jimmy Smiths. Smiths. They did bring back Jimmy Smiths. Oh, kind of going back to the original question I asked, which what is the, <laughs> what is the purpose of this from a narrative perspective? There, it's trying to bridge the gap between the prequel trilogy and the original trilogy, but unfortunately it doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't successfully do that completely. I don't know. What would you guys say on that matter? Like, do you guys think this is, a, a necessary bridge between these movies, or do you think it's kind of just cannon fodder? Oh, that's a complicated one. TJ, you want to like lead off with this? I enjoyed it for fandom's sake, but do I think it was necessary? Not necessarily. Not necessarily necessary? Not necessarily necessary. <laughs> just checking. Um, as someone who just will absorb any, like shoot the Star Wars content straight into me, I just, I need it. Uh, I have to say, like, like, I felt like it was, and I did a, actually did a survey on Instagram on this, and I just found out recently that two of the people who voted for Amazing were wrong. But That's it's, why I'm putting um, the graphic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so two people who voted Amazing were wrong, so actually it was pretty much even across the board. Were you satisfied? Did you think it was amazing? Were you terribly unsatisfied? Or was it a weird combination of all three? And TJ and I were kind of on the same page. Weird yeah. combination of all three. Because yeah. there were moments that were like really satisfying. Sure. But 
and to be fair, once again, I like this. I like Star Wars, but Star Wars movies are also like that for me. They yeah. have great moments. They have terrible moments. They have fun moments. So this is... And it, it felt was like really that. Fun. It, it was really fun. It was super fun. Yes, and it was the most like a movie as a TV show almost Do you think this was meant to be a movie? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, they had a plan for it. They were going to so, do... Rogue One, they yeah. were going to do... Obi-Wan. Obi yeah, see, yeah. And there's all going to be play on Obi-Wan because they were going to do anthologies. Honestly, though, I didn't hate this. The first three episodes, kind of... Eh, it's kind of filler-ish, you know? Up until the, I would you, say the end you of get, episode You get the first confrontation between Vader and Obi-Wan, which is really the dynamic we're looking for here, is you've yeah. got these added characters, right? We've added the Sith Inquisitors, right? Well, We've added the... Uh, what are Let's the other it. new characters? We've <laughs> added save it. Ice Cube's son, right? O.J. Jackson have, uh, Jr. We have we have JD from Scrubs. We have a lot of who did he play? You, you told was, me that yeah, and yeah, I never figured out who. Yeah, it was. yeah. He was the guy in the when the stormtroopers were in the truck with Obi Wan. He's and like Leia. the MAGA. He was Mole the guy man. that was like thought you guys. He's were MAGA moment. Them. They say they're from Parth. Or whatever they. Perk. He's like a boot looking mole person. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Wow. Oh, Zach Braff. Yeah. yeah Zach if you Braff. didn't catch that, the boot looking mole man. I didn't. Man. Great work, Zach. All right. <laughs> You've got the Sith Inquisitors, who are kind of the new characters, who are kind of Darth Vader's uh, henchmen, essentially, They're, that are helping him yeah. hunt down the remaining Jedi that they didn't quite kill off from episode three. Order 66. Execute order 66. If you know anything about the Inquisitors, they I were don't. actually nope. introduced we're... a long time ago. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and then they and then they like killed them all off before well, the these are, franchise started. These are characters that exist in the Clone Wars cartoon. Uh, no, Star correct? Wars Rebels. Oh. Uh, the follow-up series. And then they also show up in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'm a vampire. I'm a Sith Inquisitor. Blah. I'm a vampire. Kill me. Kill me. The, the Supreme Inquisitor. Uh, a lot of fans were upset when they like stabbed him through the chest or stomach or whatever he, in the show because they were like, is this canon? Can this be he, canon? He wasn't dead. Because he wasn't he's, dead he's in, Reb well, in Rebels. He's alive. And so people were like, he's not dead. This is bull Essentially what you have here <laughs> is most of the show, it, it actually centers around the Sith Inquisitors have uh, kidnapped a young Princess Leia in order to draw Obi-Wan out of hiding so that Darth Vader can kill his old master, well, right? This, essentially, that's what we're dealing with? Essentially, one Inquisitor, but the problem... Well, but she ropes everyone else into yeah, it, the essentially. Pro the problem with that for me is it's like, you guys are supposed to hunt Jedi, and all you kill is the Safty brother, who's like... <laughs> yeah. like, like go, go, go. The most obvious, like, gonna die guy ever. Yeah. yeah. And it was like, the whole time I was wondering yeah. why there weren't more Jedi, though. The Inquisitors are Jedi hunters. They're not very good if it takes them this long to catch well, Obi-Wan and then he gets away. I know he's Obi-Wan Kenobi. I'm not knocking that, but I'm just saying. A back and forth between Vader and Obi-Wan where you have Reva, who is one of the Sith Inquisitors, kind of acting eh, sort of on behalf of Vader, sort of on behalf of herself. They don't really... Do they ever explain why she hates Obi-Wan so much? Because uh, he did nothing. Because he was, her ma he was his master. He didn't kill him. But Reva... The Sith Inquisitor, the third sister, doesn't die. is one of the uh, childlings that survived younglings, younglings that survived uh, Anakin Skywalker's child murder spree with the <laughs> lightsaber, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, he recruited her to be a no, 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 no. Oh no, no, no. my God! Okay, no, well, no, no. So well. she... is this the rant? No, this isn't the rant. This is just simple explanation. Okay, she simply enough was like, like, like ran away and somehow managed to get away by playing dead. But when then Obi-Wan Kenobi and Yoda came by the temple and ran to the first they didn't see her and she wasn't like, hey, I'm alive. So she like ran away and then was eventually found by the Inquisitors and then became an Inquisitor. And there's this line where it's like, don't forget about the gutter we pulled you out of. That was the pinhead guy. So at the end of the day, <laughs> she's more mad at the or guy Han that trained her boss period. than her boss. Uh, yeah, she, because had misplaced anger because the dark side yeah. clouds your vision. Classic displacement. Classic. I'm gonna go undercover with the bad guys in a Star Wars story, right. and then try and take them out from the inside. So the idea that when a Jedi tries to uh, like infiltrate the dark side, they then eventually join the dark side, and it happens in all. It, 
It's actually weird how common it happens in the comics and the books for it to be the first time it happens. Can I say show. something about that? Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Also, just the idea that, like, oh, if I use the dark side but I stay on the light, I'll be okay. It's like, no, it's not how the dark side works, okay? Anakin's clearly bipolar. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a big issue with the Jedi is they're not treating pretty obvious mental health issues instead <laughs> of really categorizing them as Jedi or Sith. They really need to get As them always, into it goes back to healthcare. Healthcare always. in America Doesn't or like Star these Wars. Random adventure that doesn't really add much to in my opinion to any of the movies and as, even somebody that's not a fan of the prequels i don't feel like it adds much to the prequels i don't feel like it adds much to the sequels i feel like it's just this kind of like kind of like rogue one where it's like it's just something that exists but why like what it's like filling in backstory for something that we didn't need filled in so yeah at the end of the day i just feel like this if you're a fan of star wars you'll like this but like, even if you're a fan, what does this add to the series? It, it, well, and that's the problem is all it does is fill in a couple little things for uh, a new hope. Um, but yeah, like, like, why did Obi Wan Kenobi spare Vader because of Star Wars Four? Because and, he has to. Because Vader is still alive in those yeah. movies. Yeah, but like, like it didn't it didn't lead a compelling well, reason to why he was alive. It also left it too muddy. Yeah. In a way. Like and we, that's why you have to have a follow-up. But then the it show. also opens up new questions of like, oh, Luke Skywalker was attacked by a Sith Lord <laughs> when he was a kid and just like doesn't ever... A Sith uh, trainee. Whatever. It, it, it attacked by the person with a f***ing red lightsaber. <laughs> Continuity. <laughs> All right. Well, I hate look. Star Wars. <laughs> I hate Star Wars. <laughs> Let me just get this out of the way right now. I f***ing hate Star Wars. You like the Mandalorian? I like the Mandalorian until it turned into Star Wars. <laughs> That's him. I I love Star Wars. <laughs> Out of here. <laughs> oh, it's Darth Vader though. Darth ba Darth Vader. Darth okay, Vader. Okay, wait. Let's talk <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> okay. It's all garbage. They're just selling you toys. That's just they've always selling. Wait, hold on. And toys. They're selling you toys. And toys. This toy is going to exist in the next movie with this toy. They're just going to exist because they're already there. It's already happened. You already know what happens with this toy, and they fight, and they okay, fight. Okay, please don't break and it. And they do the thing, and that's what happens every time. Why are we doing this? So Why are we bridge. filling in these extra gaps of stories that we already know the outcome of? This is, is a there, toy commercial. But like, what's weird about it being a you toy guys didn't see the Hasbro tag at the end of the credits. That's 70, 1977. I don't care. What are we doing here? Almost... We're making money. I said it in the first ten <laughs> seconds of the episode. <laughs> As a big Star Wars fan, Ryan yeah. the Gaffer, what would you rate Obi Wan Kenobi the show? Like, out of five, what would you give this? You can five lightsabers, five blasters. I give it. I give it three ignited lightsabers and one unignited lightsaber. What is that? Three or four? Then it's three point five. Okay. TJ, <laughs> same question. But all three of my nope. lightsabers are double sided. No. Stop. <laughs> no. It's out of five, Stop. not ten. <laughs> you can't just multiply it by two. TJ, like that it. counts as your rant. Same question. <laughs> same question. This is the rating. The show's over, bro. You missed Wait, your chance. Seriously? You missed your chance. You missed your oh, chance. Okay. He's ending the show. TJ, what would you give? Obi-Wan Kenobi out of five. What was your rating be? Rating would probably be like a three. Three fully lit lifesavers out of five. Yeah. Yeah. So me personally, uh, I okay. thought this was mostly boring. And it caused more problems than it solved. <laughs> Ewan McGregor is a fine actor. And uh, I liked it when the lightsabers went swish swish and they made electronic clashing sounds. Uh, overall, I would give it two bananas out of five. Bananas? And. It's like an unlit lightsaber. What's the bananas to lightsaber conversion ratio? I need to know for the end. Do you guys smell toast burning? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been burning for like 20 minutes. This has been a review of Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, I, this has been a ramble about Obi-Wan Kenobi. I hope you guys join us next week. Oh uh, my God, I have so many thoughts. Ryan, would you like to, would you like to unleash? All right, um, wait, hold on. Hey, all right, I'll be back. 
Hey Siri, set timer three minutes. <laughs> Go. Three minutes. Counting down. I can do it without him here. Go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so here are my things, guys. All right, so I brought some toys to bear to give you guys some good examples of what we were missing. Because one of my biggest issues with all Star Wars content as of late is missing potential. Well, Obi-Wan Kenobi actually had a thing with the Queen of the Mandalorians. So we missed some Mandalorians. That would have been cool. We know she